Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. All right, he's back. We have White House correspondent Christian Daytop, Washington Examiner. Always great to have you on the program, sir. Been a minute. How are you? I'm great, Dr. Richie. Thanks for having me back on. Uh, I've missed joining you in the afternoons. Yeah, man. Same here. So we're going to make sure we, um, you know, we get you here more in 2024. But we we got you for the last one in 2023, and this is going to be a little different. Um, I want to talk about the presidential um, election, but in the context of Joe Biden. Because earlier today on my show, I read a letter from members of Congress against Joe Biden about his lack of humanitarian response to the Palestinian people. This was after Vice President Kamala Harris basically criticized him by saying the White House needs to take a more humanitarian position as it relates to the Palestinians. Who is she talking about? She's talking about Joe Biden. Biden seems to be slow to understand why 80% of the Democratic voters in America agree with the ceasefire. How do you see it? I think you've basically hit the nail on the head and Joe Biden is moving slowly. But what we're seeing right now, uh, the comments that the president has made at these closed door fundraisers with Democratic donors and even sending Jake Sullivan to Israel and into, into Gaza, uh, to meet with Israeli and Palestinian officials, I think it shows the recognition about what you just laid out, namely that the Democratic voters, especially the progressive wing of the party, uh, are, I would say, less than happy, but I think that's not even strong enough. They're very, very perturbed with the way the president has backed Benjamin Netanyahu in this bombing campaign that we've seen in northern and now southern Gaza. Uh, it's not just here in the U.S., it's people all around the world condemning the actions of the IDF. And this is going to be a major political headache for the president unless he shifts US policy heading into next year. You know, I said something when uh, Biden was candidate Biden. I said, everybody who's supporting candidate Biden for president is supporting him because Trump is the other option. So you're not voting for Biden because you're excited about Biden. Um, you're excited to vote against giving Donald Trump power again. And so that was kind of the main emphasis. And even if you look at the polling data, when Biden polled against other Democrats, um, he didn't poll that well except for electability. Now, electability, he was number one. Everybody just assumed he's the most electable, even though he wasn't the first pick given an even choice. So he gets the primary nod by the electability argument gets in. So you're not excited about voting for Joe. And if you say you're excited about voting for Joe Biden, you're a damn lie. So he gets in, he's president, he's an institutionalist, all right? We all know this. But the way he has doubled down with Netanyahu seemed to be even more extreme than, let's say, um, another more traditionalist Democrat. It, there, there's usually at least a level of political nuance uh, meaning there's nuance in your speech. There's nuance in the way you contextualize it, right? President Obama did it quite well where he would um, take these very traditional democratic norms and provide some nuance, at least in his commentary about it. Biden did not see the need to do that. Huge mistake, I believe. What say you? I say what we're seeing right now with President Biden's support for Israel and Netanyahu in particular uh, is just exactly what we've come to know about him over the past 50 plus years that he's been in government. Let's not forget these two men, their relationship dates back to Biden's time on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee when Netanyahu worked uh, as uh, an official in the Israeli embassy to the United States and then went on to be the United Nations ambassador for Israel. So it's not surprising that he's backing him up. And I think this is a problem that Biden is dealing with, not just in terms of the war in Israel, but in almost every issue that progressives care about right now whether it be immigration, whether it be student loan debt relief, whether it be gun violence, he is late to pick up where voters are and it's hampered him in the polls. I mean, if yeah. you look at his approval rating right now, I think he's hovering right around 38% approval in the real clear politics aggregate. I mean, that's abysmal. That's lower than any president at this point in time dating back to Jimmy Carter. Let me stress that again. He's lower than Donald Trump. He is lower. Bill Clinton. He's lower 
than George W. Bush. Of course, George W. Bush had a giant wartime bump. That being said, the wars the U.S. is involved in, even tangentially under Joe Biden's watch, they seem to be hurting his public opinion. So I think this is a factor that uh, Democrats are um, unfortunately dealing with right now. Over two thirds of the party doesn't want him to be the nominee. But at this point in the game, you've got himself, you've got Dean Phillips, you've got Marion Williamson. It's not like there are a lot of national Democrats willing to stick their neck out on the line and primary this guy, despite the fact that he's wildly unpopular in any number of issue categories. Yeah, and I have to mention um, Jen Uger, uh, who is also a candidate for president, uh, said uh, some of the very same things you said, that basically you got two thirds of the party saying no, you have a historic low as it relates to your polling right now in the field. These things are so problematic that you almost are handing over the election to whoever the um, nominee is for the Republican Party. Um, I hope that's not the case naturally, but that's definitely in the tea leaves. So before you go, here's a dynamic that I find quite interesting that may happen. At the end of the day, the Democratic Party is a company. The Republican Party is a company, these are organizations. These organizations have the ability to broker their convention. As a matter of fact, that's the way it used to be done. This wasn't a national election and we took the vote total for here and here and then we came up with a candidate. Um, they used to just go to a convention and broker that thing, all right? They can still do that technically, it would create a lot of ripples. But do you see any, any room, I'm, you, you're, you're there, you're in DC, you talk to these folks. Is there any space for Joe Biden to actually step down and not run for president in the general? There's space, and even if it's later in the primary, the delegates that he wins in those states that have already been decided at the primary or the caucus level, they could become unpledged. That's uh, this isn't a situation like 2016 where we've got super delegates. Those people would be able to select and vote for whoever they wanted to at the convention in August. And let's not take Biden's words uh, you know, for granted here. He told us just about a week and a half ago, he thinks there are roughly 50 Democrats who could beat Donald Trump in a general election. And you've got folks like Gavin Newsom, Gretchen Whitmer. Uh, they're both popular uh, governors of democratic states. They have super PACs, national name recognition. If Biden were to drop out, I would expect them to try and jump in the the race late, or even potentially be written in by these delegates come August. But again, we just don't know how sour the public will turn on the president between now and next summer. Uh, he has stated he wants to stay in the race, but how this thing is going, it's going to take a miracle for the Biden team to turn the ship around and try and reverse his polling against what's probably going to be a rematch with Donald Trump in November of 2024. Yeah, and Christian, you're a very smart analyst, you followed this a long time. Do you really see it getting worse for Biden? I don't see how it gets much worse for him. But even with that, I also don't see how it gets significantly better within the time frame. How do you see it? I think there are really two items at play here that could bump Biden's poll numbers up. Uh, the first is the economy. We started to get some of these sort of little indications that things will tick up next year. The Fed, of course, didn't raise interest rates at their meeting earlier this week. Uh, and there is the idea that inflation could drop dramatically towards that 2% mark uh, that everyone in the Biden administration and the Federal Reserve wants to hit. I think you've also got to think about the abortion question. Uh, this is really the, the one issue uh, that is a 100% home run for Democratic lawmakers. Of course, I'm talking about political viability. We've seen it in elections in 2023. We saw it in the midterm elections in 2022. And I think Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris in particular are going to be campaigning here heavily. And they hope that can carry them to not only a primary victory, but another general election victory next November. Yeah, well, here's the thing, Christian, it's a proxy. So the war or the way he's dealing with the war becomes a proxy for so many other things that people weigh consciously and subconsciously. Uh, the issue of abortion rights uh, in America definitely a win that was given politically given to the Democrats by the Republicans. The Democrats didn't earn that. They were given that victory by the Republicans. And if there is nothing else, Houston, we got a problem. We got a problem. All right.
Always good to have your analysis there, brother. Thank you for all you do. Happy holidays, you and the family. Take care, sir. Same to you. Thank you.